Hey, what is up guys? Thanks for checking out this video. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to connect USB hard drives and configure them as internal hard drives on Synology, on Synology hardware, right? So I've created some other videos on how to do it on X Penology, but when we went from 6.2.3 to 7.x, that broke that configuration, broke my old video. So I've updated it now, I've backward engineered it a little bit. Now I will say, you could brick your Synology I don't test on Synology. I, I don't have a Synology. So if you want to send me your old Synology that's upgradable to 7.1.1, I will gladly take it. I will gladly um, boot it up and, and do exactly what I'm doing here on the Synology to test it out and record it, create a new video. Um, but at the very least, give me some screenshots. Give me some feedback. Let me know how it looks on Synology. Um, I would greatly appreciate that just to help my knowledge on how to help you guys in the future. So what we're going to need are a few things. We're going to need putty. We're going to need WinSCP. We're going to need another Linux box. So we're going to have to copy this file out of out of Synology DSM into another Linux box to do some work. I'm doing that on VMware. You could do it on whatever system you want. Windows has Windows VMs or Hyper-V or whatever they call it. You can do it on Proxmox. You do it on Windows, uh, VMware Workstation. You just need an Ubuntu box. I'll be using Ubuntu. You could use any Linux box, excuse me. But I'll be using Ubuntu 2204 to make our configuration changes but as you can see, I have three drives here on my screen. Drive 2, Drive 17, and Drive 18. Drive 17 and 18 are my USB hard drives. How can I prove that? If I do an LS USB, as you see here, the Sabrent, and then maybe this one is the other one. I'm not really sure, but you can see on the right, Sabrent HDD, WDC, which is actually, the WDC W20 is actually a hard drive, a Western digital hard drive, a 200 gig hard drive. So I just want to give a quick call out that I'm using two different enclosures. One is like a three-way IDE, a laptop IDE, and then a SATA connector, kind of like a three-way uh, connector to USB. And the other one is an actual enclosure that I put a old laptop hard drive inside of. So what I want to call it here is that some may pass through the information. This one actually passes through the smart information. You can see here the power on time, the temperature, smart checks I haven't ran any lately be aware I don't know which ones will which ones won't but um, not all of them will so the first thing we need to do is get our files that we need to modify and I'm gonna provide two different ways to do this I don't know which way will work please test it out on your Synology box and let me know the chance of something breaking is very low but it, it, it is possible so the first way we're gonna do this is we're gonna first command we're going to run is sudo minus i type in your password we are now root so we can do a quick ls i've created this file mount us sh you do not have to create this we're only going to use a couple commands from this we're going to use this cd slash dev and then the mount minus t vfat sino boot one to uh, mnt sino b1 so if we go over to mnt you will see there's already some files in here I actually just recorded this entire video and then I came back and I realized my audio was absolute trash so I'm re-recording it. So there will be some artifacts uh, but I will explain everything in detail. So we're going to want to do a mkdir sinob1. Obviously I've already created it, you have not. So mkdir sinob1. So now what we're going to do is that second command cd slash dev, so cd slash dev there we go. Okay, so we're going to copy and paste this command, mount minus T, copy that, hit enter. So if we do CD, there we go. So we have mounted that. And what we need, the file we need is the rd.gz file. We need to copy this file off of our, our DSM, off of our Synology box, into our other Linux box. And this is where WinSCP comes into play. So what we need to do is copy that file over. So we've connected to our Synology box at 192.168.1.15. Just to be clear, I say Synology, I am doing this on Xpanology. So if the steps are at all different, they should be, but if they are, please let me know. So I've connected to it. And what we need to do is go to slash MNT and then Sin will be one. And we're getting permission denied because that was created by root and that's okay. So back on our putty session, we're going to do a ls. Okay, so we're going to do a copy rd.gz to slash mnt rd.gz. cd dot dot ls, ls minus ltr. And 
Now on our Windows box, create a directory wherever you want. Label one old, label one new. We're gonna do that throughout this process. So we're gonna drill into our old box. You can see this was created at 10.33 p.m. That was a while ago. We wanna download this file, so let's click download. Yes, we wanna overwrite. So you can see this is now 5.08 p.m. Our new file. And now what we need to do is we need to copy this file to our test box, right? Our test bed where we're gonna do the work. So that box is 192.168.1.50. We're gonna do the same thing over here, except we're gonna call this one packed and unpacked. Okay, so we're gonna upload this now. Again, on your test box, just create a folder wherever you wanna create it, your home directory slash temp, whatever. Create two other folders within that called packed and unpacked. Within that first folder, we're gonna upload it, our rd.gz file, so click upload. Okay, so if we jump over to here, we're on our putty session, same box, click ls, we'll see the uh, rd.gz file just popped up. Now we're gonna go cd unpack, and we're gonna run a command now. We're on this command right here, so cat home rd 04-25-23-rdgz slash rd.gz and sudo cpio.idm-idm. So copy that. And this is your, this is, you'll need to update this, right, to your path, and then rd.gz. So copy that, hit paste, ls minus ltr. Okay, so now those files are unpacked, we need to do some editing. Now there's two different ways you could do this. I don't know which way will work best, so proceed at your own risk or caution, but also please report back on which way works. The first way, if we do a vi, sorry, sudo vi on etsy.defaults slash sinoinfo.conf we're going to do a forward slash, we're going to do a port, P-O-R-T, C-F-G, hit enter so you can see eSATA port config 0x0. You'll need to set it to that. Now what would be interesting to me is see how Synology actually configures the different hardware platforms that might have eSATA configurations, that might have a couple or many USB uh, drives as well as a set number of internal port configurations. But if you want to use them all as internal hard drives, set eSATA port config 0x0, Hit N for next. You can see internal port config now, and I've set it to the 7Fs, 0x7Fs. This is what you'll want to set it to. I don't know what yours will be. Please take a screenshot let me know. I'm very curious. Also, let me know your hardware version, 918 plus, 920 plus, 36, what, 15, XS plus, all the different versions. Let me know. I'm very curious. But you're going to want to set the zero equals 0x and 7Fs. That'll set it up to 40 internal hard drives. So if you're using like a USB enclosure with multiple hard drives connected to it, uh, this is the way to go. So it's 0x and then 7Fs. And then N, so you're gonna hit I to edit that. So I and then add those Fs. I've already done that, right? So I don't need to do that. Hit escape and then I'm gonna hit N. I'm gonna find the next one, which is USB port config. Again, make sure this is 0x0. So any of the USB drives are not detected as USB drives, but rather internal hard drives. Once you are done there, and you can see I've actually added a line here that I can delete. But once we're done, now we can do a escape colon WQ. We're gonna write that file. And now you are done with the first way of doing it. You'll then have to pack the file and re-upload it to, the, to your Sino B1, which we'll get to in just one second. But if that didn't work, or you wanna try the second way, the second way will be, uh, we're gonna go CD SBIN. And don't do CD slash SBIN because slash sbin is your actual, you have an actual sbin directory on your on your Linux host. We wanna to go to that, that one that's light blue here. So cd sbin, we're gonna do an ls, and you can see we have an init.post file, so we're gonna do a sudo vi init.post. And this does look like it is a Synology file. So you can see here, Synology, post init script, copyright, yada, yada, yada. We wanna scroll down. And I don't know exactly what yours will look like, but you're gonna to want to add these lines at about this location in this file, the underscore set underscore conf underscore KV. If you'll, you'll also need this up here, underscore set, you know, this is the function where it's actually updating those files. If you don't have those, you'll need them. You'll need to copy this somehow, or I can, if, if that's not in there, let me know. I can copy that code, put it in GitHub or something. But you'll need to add the lines right here underscore set underscore conf underscore kv internal port config 0x fffff 7fs and then temp root etsy default sino info as well as the one up here same 
text up to this point until here. This one's going to Etsy. So not Etsy defaults, just Etsy, Sino Info. Add those two. And you can see here, I've set set conf kv add on port config to true. If I jump back to my host real quick and I do a cat, if I do a cat on slash etsy.defaults, sinoinfo.conf, and I do a grep on Adam, we will see Adam port config equals true. So, so I was doing some testing. I wanted to see if it actually would write this. I would not recommend this. This could this could mess up your configuration. But I'm going to do an I for insert and delete. So I'm going to make these false. So we'll see if it actually works on reboot. So now that you've updated your internal port config to have uh, seven Fs here, you want this full line. This is going to overwrite your Etsy and Etsy default sinoinfo.com internal port config line on boot every single time. And this is why we are seeing when people upgraded from 623 to 7.x that they would update the file, they'd do the reboot, and then it would get overwritten again. Nothing worked. This is why. So this should work. So if we do a escape, a WQ, we are now done with the two ways to configure this. Now we need to package it back up and get it back onto our Synology box. So how do we do that? Let's do a CD dot dot. LS, there's our files. We need to do this command now. So sudo find cpio into this packed directory. And this is why we created the packed folder, rd.gz. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste that. 35,034 blocks. Looks good. So cd dot dot cd packed. So we're going to jump back to winscp. We're on our test bed, and you can see the packed. So always click refresh when you're clicking around in WinSCP. When I jumped into this, it was showing the old file, which was 4.47 PM. I, as I mentioned, I had to re-record this because the audio was atrocious. I came in here, I clicked refresh. It updated to the new file at 5.18. So I need this file. This is on my test box. I need to download this to my local box. So I'm gonna go back here. This is my new file. Let's delete this one. Let's download this file now. So this is our new folder. This has the new rd.gz with the seven Fs and, and the atom port config set to false. It was true. Now what we have to do is go back to our Synology box. So let's go back to our putty session on our Synology box. Let's do an ls so we can see our files there, rd and rd.gz, ls minus ltr. Oh, this one actually is owned by Youngblood, but I can't change it. So let's... Um, mvrd.gz to rd.gz.save2. So there we go, save2. You're gonna just name yours.save. One more quick thing we're gonna wanna do before we delete this file is we're gonna wanna copy it. This is our original copy, right? So let's do a quick copy, rd.gz to, let's copy it to root, which is our home directory for root, rd.gz ls okay so we still have our save here we now also have an original in slash root so as i said i updated it here you can see that it has not updated so click refresh back to the putty host let's go cd dot dot cd slash temp we're going to do mkdir usb test ls rep Okay, so it's owned by root root, right? That's a problem. Root owner root group. So we're going to do a ch own youngblood on USB test. So hit up a couple times. There we go. So USB test is now owned by youngblood. So we can jump back to WinSCP. We're gonna navigate to slash temp slash USB. Let's do a quick refresh again. USB test, there we go. We're going to upload our new file, which was created at 518 today. So let's upload that. There we go. We're going to go back to slash mount ls cd sin will be one ls. And we're going to do an rmrd.gz. Now, before we do this, as soon as I hit enter, this file is blown away. It's gone. There's no recycle bin. It's completely deleted. Uh, so make sure you have a backup. Make sure you have a backup backup. Know that you could hose your box if you did any of this incorrectly and sorry I won't be responsible this is totally an educational video you do this at your own risk so 
with that known, we're going to hit enter. So we have removed that file on our boot drive. Again, the Sino B1 is our actual boot drive. So if you were to reboot right now, it would hose your box. You didn't hose it now uh, because we haven't rebooted. Everything's still in memory, so we're good. But if we do an LS, that file is gone, right? So we have the new file in that temp directory, in that temp folder. So when we want to do a copy from slash TMP slash USB test slash rd.gz to rd.gz, right? So copy CP and then slash temp is the source and then space rd.gz is the destination, the local folder, rd.gz. Hit enter, hit ls minus ltr. Make sure it's owned by root, which it is. If it wasn't, you just do a ch own root and then rd.gz, but it's already owned by root. And we're done. So now we're going to do a reboot. And as soon as you reboot it, it's going to reboot under this new configuration we just updated. Fingers crossed that you that everything works for one, but two, that uh, that Atom port config is now set to false when we do the reboot. So let's do a quick enter. And while this is rebooting, I just want to thank everybody again for watching this. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe if you really like this. I did have to buy some hardware to do this testing, so any support I would greatly appreciate. It was a couple hundred bucks, I had to buy a mini PC. And if you have a Synology box you want to send me, please send it to me. Sorry for the beeping, that is the noise the mini PC makes when it reboots. But if you do have a Synology box, old or new, that can be updated to 7.1.1, I would love to test on it. I would love to have it and, and play with it. Um, I can even send it back to you if you really want it back. Uh, but I can also keep it, right, for more videos like this. So we should be in business. If I do a ping on that IP address, there we go. The box is now coming up. So I can go back here. Let's log in. Warning. The system is now in a warning status. So this is something I need to fix. It's something I need to figure out how to fix. What happens is when the box reboots, the USB drives are not shut down appropriately and the partition freaks out. This won't cause any data loss, or at least it should not cause any data loss. Uh, and it's very easy to fix. If you notice, if I go to storage and I go to my storage pools and my volumes, they're all healthy. But if I go over here, it says the system partitions failed. Why it says that, I'm not exactly sure. I will find out hopefully one day. But it's a very easy fix. You just go over here, you click repair. You click repair there. And it's fixed. So you can see the should update system is now healthy. Just give it a second while that's updating. I want to check to see if my configs updated. So if I do a cat on Etsy default slash Sino info and do a grep on Atom, we will see that Atom port config equals false. So that modification I made did work. Awesome, so it should work for you. We can see the disk station is now healthy and we are done. So with that said, I appreciate everybody's feedback, comments, likes. I hope this video helped you. If it did, thumbs up, take it easy, have a great day.